Well, we are leaving the landscape section and we are going to go into the portraits and let's start right here uh, with those two uh, single figure uh, representations. Uh, incidentally, this is going to be elaborated on. Uh, we have uh, single figures which represent a different set of uh, approaches and problems and then we have so-called group portraits that means two or three people uh, are present on the canvas. Well, <clears throat> both of these uh, paintings are uh, representing teenagers uh, at their best. You see the kind of uh, sense of trust, uh, the kind of openness, the, that kind of childlike uh, sincerity, that kind of uh, uh, believing in everything that is good and beautiful, uh, without experiencing anything contrary. And then you see here uh, in the upper one the kind of self-confidence, uh, the kind of ready to go, uh, knowing the direction of this other teenager. And watch the color scheme. Uh, these colors are uh, very positive, quote unquote. You, you see these kind of warm greenish reds, you know, that kind of uh, sweet uh, pink or uh, different variations on red, which is a kind of color of action. So um, what I try to do in my portraits generally is to work from the inside uh, uh, to the outside, uh, not uh, really uh, getting hung up whether, all right, is this mouse line in here really straight or uh, <clears throat> Can you see this nostril more precisely? Uh, this is not the issue. Uh, the issue is the total image. What is the kind of specific charge a certain person gives off? Try to remember those when we are going to get into much more complicated situations. Uh, for the time being, we are still working with single portraits, and then we move over to uh, more complex uh, statements. But it is a much more ambitious proposition because it is a full-fledged figure and the challenge is here uh, to make the head still something, you know, which is dominating the scene uh, and uh, <clears throat> let all the accessories which are, uh, well, uh, not unimportant, you know, because it is defying uh, the rather uh, sinus uh, uh, body of a very desirable and a very attractive uh, young woman. Uh, so uh, you see, uh, the approach is entirely different in uh, both cases. In some, uh, I have some uh, uh, people who are visually very uneducated and, and they expect that uh, there is going to be a certain uniformity in painting uh, portraits and uh, they ask me, you know, yeah, I have seen all that, you know, but uh, I would like to see what mine is going to look like. Uh, can you tell me? And then I answer, no, I cannot. Why? Because I have to go exactly through that kind of discovering, editing, selecting uh, process, you know, what painting means. You know, it is not a kind of uh, blind taking in everything like a vacuum cleaner picking up all the junk you know, on the floor. It is a highly selective and highly edited uh, process. All right, uh, let's turn around and see now a tremendous lot of single portraits. We are back and we are still working with the uh, uh, single figure, single head uh, propositions. Uh, let's start here in the middle. And uh, this offers us a nice comparison between uh, this one and the neighbor. And not only the difference is fantastic in age, but in general attitude. Uh, these portraits are basically character studies, or if you would like to use a fancy word, uh, existential uh, situation studies. You know, what is the basic attitude of certain persons? 
uh, toward themselves, toward life. And you see, this is a rather young teenager uh, who is very content uh, in her rather uh, innocent existence, you know, almost a kind of brazen person. Uh, you see these kind of colors, uh, that, that kind of uh, uh, off the wall pink. Take a look at this one, for example, here. Uh, then you see the, the kind of full-fledged uh, candy apple red on her lipstick. And then again, you see the same colors, uh, kind of basic uh, uh, children toy uh, kinds of uh, colors uh, uh, coming back uh, all over the place. So you see, uh, this kind of uh, living on, uh, I, I'm, I hope I'm not misunderstood, but uh, uh, on a level of life which uh, is not really full of insight and experience. It is closer to a kind of uh, animal-like uh, uh, kind of vegetation, just being there, uh, nothing more, uh, nothing less. Uh, you, uh, you contrast this uh, to uh, the kind of uh, anxiety, the kind of uh, uh, questioning, the kind of inquisitive uh, attitude to a person who went through a few life experiences. And uh, you can see, uh, even if you come close, you know, <coughs> I can show you the expression here. I don't even have to mention too much. Just take a good look. Incident in an art show, uh, you use your eye and your heart. Uh, forget about the kind of intellectualization, you know, what is going on. Too much is going on in our life. Just give up everything, you know, and just uh, <clears throat> approach this uh, with an open mind, you know, and let your feelings and your primary instincts, in the best sense of the word, uh, work. Look at this, look at this. You see, I don't have to say too much. And this is art, you know, it is <clears throat> capturing essentials and certainly not dwelling on what kind of skin surface this person has or that. Perhaps the most obvious one is this. Uh, it is the powerful Greek god Cum, uh, Old Testamental prophet, uh, type of uh, the powerful, the mighty old man, a kind of uh, <coughs> Michelangelo or Phidias or Zeus incarnation. And uh, you can see the brush strokes. Uh, the whole approach is uh, talking about uh, this kind of directness, this, this kind of no pussyfooting, getting to the essence, you know, and representing something uh, forcefully. So uh, uh, you don't know who this person is. It doesn't make any difference whether uh, this is a college president or a corporate president or a, a church leader or a civic leader. Uh, you see the uh, kind of essential uh, qualities of that human being. On this basis, you know whether you would like to invite this person uh, for dinner or go out with them or listen to him. Uh, it's, uh, it is, everything is there, including something which uh, people usually don't like to talk about, uh, especially not in my age, you know, there is a kind of a bottle of the bulge, <laughs> bulge is there. But this is part of, uh, her, of his energy, uh, part of the, the kind of uh, critical mass which is really coming down at you uh, like a locomotive. So this is the energetic uh, uh, person. Take a look at the uh, hand in here. You know, it's balled up, but any moment it is ready to strike. Let's go to the exact opposite of this. And this is the laid back old man. Uh, somebody who quietly enjoys his existence. Uh, he formulates his opinion. Uh, about everything, uh, uh, has uh, a nice accumulated backlog of personal experiences and uh, he's just quietly standing there, uh, meditating, uh, smoking his pipe, 
uh, the whole world could collapse around him and he uh, would not change his attitude too much. Uh, now, the painting in between is indeed an in between. Uh, you still see that kind of uh, vibrating energy, uh, that kind of getting involved, uh, having a very um, intense intellectual life, but uh, without uh, the kind of a plumb without that kind of energy as the previous one, or needless to say, without that kind of laid back quality as uh, uh, the gentleman with the pipe. Now, let's go a little bit further, and as long as uh, <coughs> these two are next to each other, this is um, the portrait of uh, somebody who is aggressive who is coming down at you and he has to have his way and nothing else and uh, the nothing less. Uh, so it is an entirely different type. It is the man of action. It can be brazen too. You know, it is not uh, really the most refined style but, uh, uh, of human approach and you, you can ever imagine. And how do we, how do we know this? The colors are supporting uh, the statement. <clears throat> Take a look at this rather banal baby blues or the kind of almost shrill contrast uh, between the turquoise and between the orange or <clears throat> uh, the, the kind of pinks thrown up against uh, uh, these uh, greens. So uh, the whole uh, climate, the whole atmosphere around uh, that person is so different than, uh, for example, this one here. This is a portrait of an introvert. We have seen the extrovert next to it, but this is uh, an introvert uh, person who is uh, living in his own world. He is not interested in uh, contacting us. Uh, his eyes are focused out in the far. He is uh, totally submerged. Uh, in his thoughts, uh, reflections. Uh, it is somebody who is living by uh, his intellect uh, primarily, and not so much in uh, trying to push something aggressively on us. Uh, the images are uh, <clears throat> different representations from the books of this major Catholic writer, uh, J.F. Powers. I was privileged enough to paint him in my studio. An individual as defined by uh, his or her, in this case his of course, uh, profession. Uh, we see uh, that uh, this person is not a poet, he is not an auto mechanic, he is not a teacher. He is definitely a player of a rather ambitious uh, musical instrument, in this case the cello, and uh, we see, you know, how uh, energetically he is moving that bow uh, back and forth, totally concentrating on uh, what he is doing. And uh, I try to uh, just convey somehow the richness of the sound by uh, the richness of uh, the color of uh, his garment. Uh, again, uh, we have to use our famous device by now. Uh, you see this kind of purples, you know, which uh, are uh, <clears throat> surfacing in the most unexpected moment, close to the cello, and uh, uh, in different purplish, bluish, again ish ish variations, uh, which are then juxtaposed occasionally with these uh, reddish orangish or orangish colors or you can even take a look what happens in here you know there is again no photographic evidence that there is a blue there but without that blue the predominance of the warm colors would be unbearable so uh, again we are talking about the internal laws of art in which has nothing to do with photographic observation or or scientific quantifications um, uh, even the greens here are flaring up. Why? Because they have to activate the amount of reds. See this uh, reddish, uh, orangish uh, uh, colors there. 
Uh, uh, this is another uh, kind of approach to portraiture. I think we have to switch now to uh, complex uh, deals which uh, uh, involve uh, the interaction of two figures and we see uh, one here. Uh, this is a very late double portrait. As a matter of fact, I started it uh, in 99, but I finished it in uh, 2000. Uh, and in a double portrait, the issue is not uh, the mathematical sum of two individuals, but the interaction between the two of them. What kind of human qualities do re they represent and how do, we, how do they interact? As you uh, see in here, uh, <clears throat> if we start from the left, you know, it is the man who appears first to our vision and uh, <clears throat> he is uh, quietly enjoying the company of the woman and the woman is the more active half, you know, she is leaning uh, toward him with a kind of uh, blissful uh, smile, a note please the background. The man is surrounded by a very structured fancy chair. The, wo wo the woman is surrounded by nothing. So you see uh, she has her warmth and even the blue color which is supposed to be uh, cold by definition is a warm blue and her personality uh, so she represents um, perhaps not so much in a material sense the support that this person has, but she has a kind of decorum. See the gold and the blue, uh, it is again, they represent a, a kind of royalty here. Uh, the man in comparison is drab, uh, but he has that kind of fancy support. So. Uh, he contributes something uh, uh, along these lines, she contributes something along those lines, along uh, her uh, lovely expression. So you see there is a kind of nice give and take, nice balance which uh, certainly denotes something which is a, a well-functioning relationship. This is a modern um, or up-to-date version of uh, mother and child, or if you wish, the Virgin Mary and the uh, uh, young Christ. And I wouldn't say the baby Christ, you know, because this boy is certainly not a baby anymore. Uh, in double portraits, perhaps I should mention this, uh, it is very hard to keep a balance. Who is more important? Uh, who is... Uh, uh, the kind of dominating figure and uh, who is to a certain extent the uh, subordinate person. The dominating figure, contrary to expectations, is not the mother, uh, but the child who is interpreted here uh, as a creative person who is doing rather fancy artwork which is reflected in the rather fancy shirt uh, of his who is looking out at us rather defiantly uh, very uh, secure and very almost cocky uh, in its artistic uh, achievement. And of course uh, the studio is supporting him, the studio surroundings. You see a bunch of uh, brushes around uh, him. Uh, take a look uh, at his expression. You know, he is quite uh, <laughs> quite the master of his fate. You know, and certainly not, not the kind of happy ladies home journal uh, type child, you know. Uh, I never believed in that kind of uh, sentimentalism. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you see the mother is totally absorbed in the son, has a kind of sweet Madonna face, who is quietly protecting and uh, admiring the child. I mentioned something about composition before. Uh, now what we see in here is the usage, uh, seems to me this is my second nature, of relatively big empty spaces juxtaposed to high density areas. This area is about as dense as it can get and to make things worse or better uh, we add this, you know, and then we have 
something which is almost a kind of oriental tapestry in here. Again, here the subject matter is, at least at face value, the figure in uh, surroundings. Model is now uh, is uh, looking out for us. Uh, she is actively looking for uh, uh, for a contact. Why? Because she has to say something. Uh, not necessarily two happy things. Uh, she would like to share uh, with us something uh, which is uh, not necessarily a, a very ha happy experience. So you see, this is a complex face uh, with uh, lots of uh, undertones uh, of uh, sadness, stress, uh, whatever. But we know that uh, there is so much uh, happening and not only in the present but in the past. All right, again, let's uh, focus on the face. <clears throat> and everything uh, around her is somehow uh, supporting this kind of uh, sense of turmoil. Uh, for example, something like this, which is incidentally a uh, representation of my self portrait, which we have seen in the alcove. Uh, so to speak. So this in itself, if anybody is interested in abstract painting, you know, it is uh, an abstract painting itself, you know, it certainly uh, describes that kind of turmoil, which is a, a kind of state of mind, uh, what you see in here. These flickering red lights, which are coming back, again, they flicker like warning signs on a dashboard. You know, when you see this in an airplane, you know that uh, perhaps uh, you have to say your uh, last prayers. So you see again that kind of tension, which mutatis mutandis we have seen in the Salzburg landscape, if you still remember. Next to painting is uh, in a kind of, uh, we are talking about this and this. Uh, are entirely different. Uh, there is a hidden issue here, namely not only the individuals, but um, the nature of creativity or the quality of the creative person. And creativity is represented here uh, in one instance uh, by the sculptor studio, you see, uh, this very energetic, impressive, and very beautiful uh, woman is working, uh, obviously, on the portrait of this uh, young boy who is uh, the, uh, who, ha who happens to be uh, the son, and he is uh, giving us a break uh, as if uh, she would look at us, you know, almost uh, questioning us, all right, what do you think, you know, uh, uh, how do you feel about my work? Uh, how do you feel in the studio? Do you have kind of a uh, remark? So he is looking out at us. Uh, she has to say something. Uh, uh, she has a kind of active mind. You know, we realize what is going on uh, in her head. Uh, whereas the boy is uh, really a prop. You know, it is just uh, playing an absolutely passive role. Um, you see, she is surrounded again uh, by the sacred tools, the brushes, you know, and that kind of studio paraphernalia. Uh, take a look at her face, you know, again. We can have her isolated. And then all the so-called junk around her, uh, including, uh, of course, the horizontal, vertical, the architectural uh, qualities of these frames which uh, create a sense of stability. Uh, she is wedged uh, solidly into a kind of framework uh, which supports her. On the other hand, she is not an intellectual construct. You know, you see uh, it is creative passion uh, they are feeling. And how, how does an artist express this? You know, again with color. Uh, this is the uh, main mean of an artist. Take a look at this red. What's going on in here? That glow. So this is a powerhouse. 
This is the boiler room, you know, which is uh, running the show. This red is activated by what? By the amount of greenish blue, which is close by uh, to this. So again, what we see in here, um, art is a, a kind of, <laughs> I hate to use the pun, art of coordination. Again, the same blue comes back. But if you look at this red in here, it doesn't have that kind of full-fledged intensity as uh, the uh, <coughs> red of the bodies or uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, little protective uh, uh, thing, you know, what uh, she is wearing. Again, tightly, uh, we are wedged in into the studio situ situation. You see there is a landscape and there is a head of a boy here, you know, who is competing a little bit with the boy here, you know, with the real boy. So which one is the real, which one is, is the painting? Uh, this was in 92. Uh, I think uh, my best attempt in uh, defying uh, and basically glorifying uh, the power of the creative mind and the creative person. I had to wait till, uh, what is this, uh, 98, uh, from 92 to 98 to have even more of a concentrated um, uh, chance, uh, concentrated uh, possibility to put across the same idea. Again, we are uh, facing uh, a beautiful young woman. Take a look at the head, for example. Not only the head is, is uh, impressive, but what is below. The whole body has that kind of sculptural Greek, uh, uh, Greek statue type uh, fullness except the surroundings are even wilder than in the previous case. You see uh, painting is hanging uh, very close by. This landscape is hanging above her, uh, her head. You know, and, uh, she is surrounded by very colorful, uh, but very disorganized, uh, junk-like uh, situation. So this is a kind of chaos. Uh, but we don't have a single moment of doubt that she is going to overcome. Why? Because this is the very nature of creativity, that you make order out of disorder. Out of chaos, uh, you end up with something which is not chaos, but uh, just the opposite. So, so as you see, I, uh, I think I achieved here uh, with a single figure uh, what took me two figures uh, before. Well, of course, at face value, these are portraits. But uh, we are not, uh, in art, we are not interested in things at face value. Th this, is, uh, this is for the financial people or people who are giving you ticket uh, based on your license plate. You know, art is a different proposition. Exactly, we are not interested in the face values. What happens below the facade? and beyond the facade. Uh, this is what uh, uh, keeps artists uh, ticking, including myself. Uh, let's go over to this one, because this is a little bit of a different deal. Uh, we see the uh, charming uh, human figure, uh, a sweet little teenager, is not confronting us, like in the uh, previous case. As a matter of fact, she dissolves in the surroundings. She is part of that kind of uh, summerish radiance uh, uh, of, uh, you know, of a nice Minnesota summer. Uh, this is incidentally uh, at my balcony. Uh, it is an acrylic, one of those rare instances where I work with the human figure in this uh, acrylic technique. Look at something which is uh, uh, basically an action painting and uh, a portrait uh, to boot. And we are talking about the uh, <clears throat> portrait, if this is the right word, of a little ballerina. Uh, this is set up in my studio, but uh, I think I managed to fool the viewer into believing that this is a real uh, ballet action. 
stage set uh, in full action. And this explains why details are not uh, really worked out, you know, in a photographic sense, because I wanted to uh, give the sense of um, <coughs> quickness, of the lack of time uh, to <coughs> get into details. And if you look at the face, again, we use our little device. Uh, you see the <coughs> eye is stated in a very summary manner. Um, we don't know exactly where is the corner of the mouth. Perhaps it, it is here, perhaps it's lower. Uh, in quick motion, we don't have this kind of luxury to analyze things in a very slow moving manner as we did before. For example, if you remember, if you still remember uh, those few drawings, uh, how I uh, started my artistic career. Well, there is 40 years <laughs> in between, and you see the difference. 